Kyle Snyder, Olympic champion and multiple-time world champion, one of America's best upperweights in recent times, makes his way to Pan Am's to collect yet another gold medal in dominant fashion, attacking two opponents and pinning the other. Kyle's third match can only be described as confusing and amusing? His opponent tried so many random and interesting things, stuff that really get you scratching your head like, huh? Kyle only had three matches, as did Jordan Burroughs. Let's see if he beat JB's overall time of 4 minutes and 17 seconds, which is not an easy time to beat. Match number one, quarterfinals against Maxwell Lee. 21 seconds in, they're in an over-under situation. Kyle goes for a knee pick on the left. Super dangerous doing this from here, as you're basically feeding them momentum for a lateral drop. If Max stepped right and put his hips in, he could easily throw Kyle. Though they're at the edge of the mat, and likely Max will hit out of bounds first, so maybe that's why Kyle isn't afraid to run at this? Max circles left, pushes Kyle to just an underhook. Kyle maintains a good angle, like he's going for a push out here, and Max tries to use that overhook to whip Kyle back out in front of him, but slips a little, putting his arm in a super weird position that he has to bail from because it's tweaked out a little too much. Max goes to a quad pod to avoid the takedown. In freestyle, you have to make the knee hit the mat here to get a takedown. Kyle isn't able to do that, but they end up giving him the push out point anyways. Score is 1-0, Kyle. 35 seconds in, Kyle lunges for a quick high head outside single off the whistle. Max was still trying to get back to his stance, adjust his knee pad, which is probably what prompted Kyle to take this shot. This is a smart shot for an upper weight. At the higher weights, you're much better off staying high on the shots if you can help it. If you go low, you're vulnerable to being sprawled on, and that's a lot of weight that comes crashing down. Heavier guys can't withstand that amount of body weight like a lightweight can, so you're better off if you can avoid it altogether by taking quick shots like this when available. Kyle converts to a double and tries to run that, but Max straightens his legs out between Kyle's legs, which makes that super awkward. People do this naturally when they're being drilled on to soften the blow. Either way, it's annoying and makes it difficult to run through the double. Kyle then weakly runs the pike and drops Max to his butt and gets the takedown. Score is 3-0, Kyle. This is the same position you find yourself in after you do a blast double. For your opponent to get back to his base, he has to cross his legs, which would give up an easy leg lace. Kyle doesn't even need a do that much though, he wisely keeps the double he had, lifts up the bottom leg, and rolls Max across his back for another two points. Scores 5 0 Kyle. 55 seconds in, Kyle has a lefty underhook on the right again. Max again tries to whip Kyle and throw his hips in with that overhook. This can get your opponent off balance and score you feet to back, which is four, but it's not doing much to Kyle at all. Kyle reaches down at the near leg with his free arm, almost as if he did what I call a baseball throw, where you throw the underhook forward and attack the near leg, but he doesn't really try to clear the underhook. He just picks the ankle up to break him down to his base. Kyle blocks the near ankle with his knee, likely to make it difficult for Max to circle away and out in front again, as he maintains pressure with that underhook. It looks like Kyle is just trying to make Max bail from his overhook again for an easy takedown, but Max doesn't give it up that easily this time, and so Kyle circles to the far side a little, digs his knee in, as if he's looking to throw the far leg in. What Kyle does here is dangerous. Max slips off of that overhook and so he's okay, so maybe he felt like it was going to slip, but if Max had a better overhook, he could have circled his hips to the left and thrown Kyle to his back. It looks like he tried to do that as he slipped off of it. Throwing the far leg in or even circling to the far side in a position like this is much safer if you have a single and your opponent has a shin wizard. Score is now 7-0 Kyle. Minute 21 in, Kyle has that over under position again, this time does a very intentional baseball throw, looking to attack the near leg with his left hand. He chases it down and eventually drops the underhook to a single as Max runs away from the position. It's smart to drop to a single here because again, chasing down a tie up like this can lead to an easy lateral drop if your opponent digs underhook on that far side, plants their feet, and throws their hips in. I've seen this exact motion and pressure go badly so many times. Max drops to his base and Kyle covers, but is only awarded the push out point for his efforts. Score is 8-0 Kyle. Minute 33 in, Kyle has a lefty collar tie and so Max goes over tie on the same side. Kyle goes to a lefty single here, which is a very sneaky shot from this tie up. Max doesn't have the ability to block with that arm because it's busy on the collar tie. Kyle again doesn't really penetrate, more just snatches the leg and lifts it up, which again is smart at this weight. Kyle starts to run double, but then just circles around behind. Max drops to a quad pod again. Kyle spiral ride pushes him down for the takedown. 10-0 tech for Kyle Snyder in one minute and 40 seconds. Match number two, semifinals against Luis Perez. Minute in, Kyle gets an underhook on the left. Luis's head starts to drop a little, and so Kyle snaps it down, trying to get a front headlock. Luis reaches up with his left arm to try to get an underhook and stabilize his position. Luis comes up and starts putting too much pressure into Kyle, who throws his right hip in, now with the overhook. This is similar to what Max was trying to do to Kyle in the last match. Luis goes down a little easy, in my opinion. Looks like he tried to use the hip pressure to lateral drop Kyle, but wasn't able to get out in front of him enough, and so wasn't able to get that far with his own throw. Kyle reacted well, jumped right over, posted, didn't give up back exposure, and so Lewis gave up the four points. Feet to back. Score is 4-0, Kyle. Minute five in, Lewis actually gets a takedown. Kyle does a quick fake off the whistle. Lewis immediately drops to a lefty single as Kyle tries to snap the head. Lewis's shot misses, as does Kyle's snap, which makes Kyle's subsequent sprawl a little awkward as well. Lewis is able to sneak around the side, almost like a duck under, get to a single, and starts coming up to a double. And so Kyle wisely bails to the mat to only give up a takedown. Score is 4-2, Kyle. Couple seconds later, similar scenario happens. Kyle fakes a 
low double off the whistle. Lewis looks to reshoot, but this time the shot is not very deep. It's super far away, and so Kyle is able to snap Lewis down to his base, cut the angle, and get a piece of the leg. Kyle keeps the head, which is interesting. Normally, you would let go of the head here to allow yourself a better angle and make it so your opponent can't grab your elbow and keep you out in front. Kyle's actually able to get a cradle here. Super strange. It's so difficult to get a cradle like this from a normal front headlock position past the fourth grade, let alone at this level. Kyle pushes him to his back, gets back exposure, scores 6 to Kyle. He won't be getting points for the takedown. If you get back exposure from a grounded position and then you get on top, you're not awarded for the takedown. Kyle lunges forward with the cradle again to get back exposure. This is weird because the score ticks up 8-2, to two, but the ref doesn't show two points. I don't know. Kyle circles around back, pulls Lewis into a sit-out, gets another two points for back exposure, scores 10-2, then proceeds to drop him to his back for the pin. The end sequence didn't have too much cool technical stuff going on. This is what we call big brothering someone, pushing someone around in a non-technical way just because you can. Kyle ends the second match with a pin in two minutes. Kyle's combined wrestling time is three minutes and 40 seconds, meaning he would need to beat his next opponent in 37 seconds to beat Jordan Burroughs this time. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Match number three, finals against Arturo Salat. Ten seconds in, Kyle snaps a head down and gets Arturo's hands to the mat, then catches an underhook on the right and forces Arturo's head to slip under a front headlock. It is super important that you keep your head up in situations like this. Giving up front headlocks from this position is not a good habit. Kyle tries to cut the corner to a shot, but doesn't get anything from it. Arturo faces him nicely, and so Kyle settles for the pushout. Scores 1-0 Kyle. Kyle would have benefited from changing direction here, maybe chasing down the right side like he did, and then when Arturo matched the position, snapping everything to the left and attacking the right side. Doing this makes takedowns so much easier to chase down. 40 seconds in, Kyle has another front headlock. This time, Arturo comes up to a double, something you don't typically want to try in this position because it's pretty easy to get snapped down when your hands leave the mat. But he makes contact with the legs and drives himself up, gets to a high single. Kyle controls the head, whizzers, attacks the hand, and so Arturo has to settle for a push out. Arturo should have tried to run the pike, then double, change direction, do anything but what he did, which was just walk forward. Maybe he was only looking for the push out. Score is 1 1. Arturo's winning by criteria because it's tied and he scored last. 56 in. Arturo does a cartwheel? My only guess is that his goal was to confuse Kyle and immediately shoot after the cartwheel, but this is super silly against anyone good, as they will capitalize and usually attack as soon as you land, or in this case, before you land. It's almost like disrespectful of him to do this. Maybe he was just having fun because of who he's wrestling, I don't know. Kyle spears him, then circles around. Arturo stays in a quad pod. Kyle pushes him forward with a claw ride. Scores now 3-1 Kyle. Minute 20 in, Arturo does a lefty single. Kyle tries to sprawl and cut the angle, but Arturo comes up with a lefty high crotch. They play ring around the rosy for a little until Kyle accidentally steps out, giving Arturo another push out point. Score is 3-2 Kyle. Minute 45 in, Kyle has a front headlock again. Arturo stays in the grounded position and not give up a push out point. Kyle converts to an arm drag on the left, pushes forward, getting Arturo almost to his feet, then circles around, but only gets the push out point. Score is 4-2, Kyle. Two minutes in, Arturo takes another random lefty single. Kyle gets a front headlock. Arturo attacks the legs again from this stuck under position. Drives Kyle almost out of bounds with it, but Kyle snaps and circles out a little bit, and then loses his footing. Hand touches out of bounds, and so Arturo gets another push out point. Score is 4-3, Kyle. Arturo takes another random shot off the whistle, this time super far away, doesn't get close to the legs, and so Kyle snaps the head down, cuts the corner, and gets around Arturo, who is now in a quad pod. Arturo tries to cartwheel over Kyle, similar to what Yanni did to Sasso in NCAA Finals, but he doesn't have the outside leg control. Kyle kind of just jumps with him and stays on top for the takedown. Score is 6-3, Kyle. Though Yanni was able to do this cartwheel to Sasso, it doesn't seem super effective. I'd say in the same realm of a Granby roll, and that most of the time your opponent will just jump with you, but it's something to try. 40 seconds to go in the period, Kyle has an underhook on the right again, and Arturo tries a single on the far side. This single is really difficult to get to, pretty easy to block. A fireman's carry would be a lot easier to go for, because you can kind of just sneak underneath. Kyle circles away, sprawls, gets to a front headlock, again, is able to work himself to an arm drag again, and circle around for another takedown, 8-3. Spoiler alert, Kyle didn't beat Jordan Burroughs time. Sad face. Second period starts, Kyle goes for a lefty collar tie, Arturo does something similar to what we called a boot scoot, but his head is way back. I haven't seen one in a long, long time, but with a boot scoot, you would pop the elbow back, duck your head under, slide on your knee to a shot, but you'd stay in your stance relatively. Arturo's head being back like this, it's more like he's sliding into home plate, too far away to attack anything. Kyle sprawls, gets the front headlock, cuts the corner to a single, starts coming up, and then Arturo tries to throw Kyle with his arm? It fails spectacularly, and Arturo falls right to his back, giving up the four for feet to back. Then he slides his way out of bounds, which is worth a caution and another point. Kyle did end up getting one more point. Maybe the ref thought the arm throw was a key lock, so he penalized him one more time for that, or maybe he swore or something. Who knows? Either way, Kyle gets a 14-3 tech fall in the most interesting match I've seen in these past few months.